Hello, folks, and welcome to another session of Discovering the Wines of the Private Barrel Auction for 2022 for the Auction of Washington Wines. And I can't tell you how excited I am about this particular session. We could talk an hour, but we've got about five minutes, and I'd like to introduce you to the winemaking team of Matthew Sellers. The three of them have been responsible for some of the most iconic wines in Washington this last couple of decades. And now they are at Matthews, a great supporter of Washington Wine and the auction. And Hal and Alex and Jesse, welcome aboard. Nice to have you here. Hello. 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 <laughs> These guys have more fun in the cellar than anyone I know, but <laughs> um, they're also producing great wine. And what they've got here is the only white wine in the private barrel auction, and it's simply dynamite. It's a Sauvignon Blanc, 100%. And I'm going to toss it to you guys to talk about this wine because it's pretty terrific. Sure. Take it away. I, I appreciate that. I mean, first and foremost, I'd just like to say um, it's an honor to be here talking with you. Um, it's, you know, previously where we came from, uh, we were kind of caretakers, stewards of, of the brand and um, didn't have a whole lot of uh, agency artistic license over the wines. And so um, this new opportunity has presented itself where we can work with a um, wide range of or palette, if you will, of varietals and vineyards and um, people and to, to curate our own relationships, um, you know, with, with someone such as you, Bob, a, a Washington wine legend um, is pretty remarkable to be sitting here across from you at this point in our careers. Um, it is truly an honor. So thank you. I'm, I'm thrilled to be tasting your wine. So uh, let's have at it. This comes from the Bacchus Vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about White Bluffs and Bacchus Vineyard. Sure. So this is a uh, 2021 uh, Bacchus Vineyard Sauvignon Blanc from the White Bluffs AVA, newly appointed AVA in 2021. And doing um, some research, I don't want to sound robotic about the AVA, but uh, it's about 93,000 acres, um, of which only 1,100 are planted under vine. So it's a small postage stamp of an AVA. Uh, it sits at an elevation of about 500, 500 to 900 feet. Um, right next to the Columbia, about 20 miles north of Tri-Cities. And what's interesting and unique about this, I find, is that it uh, sits on this ancient um, lake bed of, of minerals. And so these vines um, don't touch any, or interact with any basalt. I think that's pretty damn unusual for most vines in Washington state. I know that. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, it's it's very insulated by um, you know its elevation and by the Columbia. You can you know look across uh, Hanford effectively to Red Mountain and and yeah. the Rattlesnake Hills. Um, but Bacchus Vineyard in particular is uh, a very storied vineyard in and of itself. I mean, it was acquired in decades 19 old. decades decades yeah, old. acquired in 1968 and planted in 1972, the same year as the Watergate scandal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but these are, you know, some of the oldest vines in the state. Um, not only like uh, oldest Sauvignon Blanc vines, but, you know, oldest vines in general. It's, it's uh, pretty remarkable. Um, uh, let's see, what else was I going to say? Ma I'm managed by some of the most phenomenal people that we, mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to work with. Lacey Liebeck. Um, and her team, um, Kent Walliser, Director of Operations of, of uh, Sagemore Bacchus. Um, just great down-to-earth people who really know their stuff. And, and uh, another cool thing about this, too, is that um, the Auction of Washington Wines, you know, is very supportive or supports the WSU, Eno, and uh, VIT program. And Lacey is a, a product of that program. And so to uh, it kind of comes full circle, having her. Yeah. Um, Go Cougs! <laughs> Uh, uh, no, uh, work, working with her and having her manage oh, this yeah. vineyard. I mean, she does a phenomenal job. So I, I think it really speaks to, mm -hmm. um, forgive me, uh, Husky fans out there, but I really think it speaks <laughs> to the quality of that program. Um, they're doing a great job. And um, this, this auction really supports, you know, a great cause. Um, 
pretty phenomenal to be able to work with 50 year old vines. Um, that is a special thing. That and how, really what do you think that brings to the party when you're, when you're there making the picking decision, doing the yeah. fermentation, what do you think old vines bring? We, um, we, we were pretty diligent about going out to the vineyards and tasting fruit this last vintage. I mean, obsessive. And uh, we got to taste this fruit over the course of, you know, a lot over the course of that last month leading up to the pick. And it, the diversity of flavors within like a given canopy, let alone within the, the, this particular block is it was wild i mean everything from like really ripe passion fruit expressions to really like tart and green you know like bright acidity on the on the inner canopy and so i think it's just it's part of it is the diversity of expression but but the other part is i mean i don't want to take away from a, a talking point that maybe one of you guys has we were out there in the middle of the heat dome we were there when those 118 degree temperatures we were there that day um and these vines were thriving thriving yeah. they were they were just withstanding that intensity of um heat in a really incredible way and a large part of that is due to the vineyard management mm -hmm. i think um they are they were mitigating that intense heat with some overhead sprinklers and misters um, kind of doing a rotation around the blocks. Mm -hmm. And um, what Lacey was telling us is that that upper canopy, maybe it's at 120 degrees, the fruit zone was under 100. Um, and there, it's just, so I mean, give credit where credit's due. I mean, Lacey and her team are doing incredible innovative things to combat inten the intensity of heat to, to hopefully preserve freshness in something like a white wine like this. But um, at the same time, I got to think that just the structure of that vine being in that place mm -hmm. for 50 years gives it a lot of resiliency. It, it's seen it's yeah. seen a lot. It's seen a lot of things, maybe not 118 degree days, but, you know, it gets hardened over time and yeah. it has more experience than any of us. Yeah, Jesse, do you, well, some of you, some of you youngsters, not all of us old guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jesse, uh, comment about that. Take that one step farther in terms of the the lake bed aspects of Bacchus. High mineral content is that particularly high calcium content from calcium it, carbonate deposit. Uh, it 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 is. But uh, one one thing that we were talking about is that this is this is our first time working with Bacchus, and so. Um, uh, there's a little bit of unpredictability there. We're not sure entirely like how, how the wine is going to react to, um, or, or just, just what the, the site is going to provide for the grapes. Okay. Right. What, I mean, what we can speak on is as Hal alluded to walking through it, it was, it was like a candy shop. It was a little bit of everything, you know, some, some like sweet, sweet, you know, berries mixed in with really tart acid driven acid driven you know berry so it was it was really unique going through there and just getting all of these multi-layered complexities that you could just build with on and we found ourselves you know leading up probably the third to fourth week of august looking at each other like we're we're gonna pick this will be the first pick we've ever made in august wow for, yeah. for us and it was at the ripeness we wanted but the flavors and the complexity was all delivered unlike many of the other varietals that we were looking at around the state that had, you know, accumulated sugars, but just didn't have the flavors quite developed yet. So we really found that maybe speaking upon these 50 year old vines, they're just very consistent. And that speaks to just them being 50 year old vines and maybe finding, you know, some sort of just nice flow consistency uh, whether it's really hot or really cold you're yeah, in you're out. yeah i think i think they've just been managed really well from the mm -hmm. get-go like um really good sap flow obviously because sitting sitting on these you know sandy loam well-drained soils like there's just incredibly even vigor across the whole um the the whole block mm -hmm. got it got it well it certainly translate I, I i look at my notes because i've tasted this wine over the last three days opened the fresh bottle today for our discussion. And I've got a litany of descriptors and I'm not a, a flowery sort of writer, okay? But this this sweet white flowers, fresh grass, 
a lemon curd, slightly lemon zesty vanilla lees, just the whole thing. How did you get there? What'd you do in the cellar? Barrel fermented, tank fermented, um, lees stirred. What did you do? I I'd like to first start off with a cheers to you, Bob. <laughs> I, I always I always like to cheers when we're drinking. I just want to cheers. <laughs> well, um, good good for you. before us in Washington wine and paved the way for us. Uh, um, thank you. We're, thank we're you. It's, it's an honor. Your takes on our wine. That is incredible. We're beside ourselves right now. Uh, but, but I'm honored I, to, that you're asked me to do this. So, so tell us how you got here. What did you do? Yeah, we can kind of tag team this. The mm -hmm. um, fruit, fruit was harvested, handpicked. Um, as, as you know, Sauvignon Blanc can develop some um, rot pressure if depending on how long you hang it in the vineyard and so Lacey and her team did multiple uh, passes in the vineyard just kind of clean passes and so by the time we harvested this by the time they harvested this it was really clean fruit beautiful yeah. fruit right coming into the bin so we bring that in um you know we're we're whole cluster pressing it just just hours after it's picked um doing a lot of CO2 blanketing um, as we're pressing it. I mean, I mean, really, really trying to decrease oxygen introduction from from the get go. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so let it cold settle for 24 hours. Um, after that, direct in, um, uh, di went directly into barrel, uh, direct inoculation with more CO2 blanketing just to eliminate any oxygen ingress throughout the process. Um, no SO2 addition. Uh, no, we yeah, did, we, we did, did, we did, a little we did bit. Yes. okay. We at, did. um, at press in yeah. the pan, but yeah. super light press. Um, let's see, cold settle. Yeah. Um, it was the, the interesting, one of the most unique things about this, this wine in particular is that this was, a, we we're carving off five, five cases of, um, wine from four individual, uh, cigar barrels, 265 liter Hermitage cigar barrels. Uh, thick stave, Bertrange oak, uh, made famous for, by Dagano. A light toast. Yes. Super light, super light toast. Um, and so, you know, that, that ended up, um, creates more surface contact, surface to volume, surface area to volume, lees contact. Mm -hmm. And so throughout the ferment, you know, we're, we're stirring the lees. Um, it was a low and slow ferment, about 30 days, um, stirring frequently during ferment and after, mm -hmm. um, no mallow. So, you know, preserving that tension on the, on the wine. We, in, in balance with that least stirring, you know, building up the texture and the weight and the body of the wine by having that acid play in balance was, was at the forefront of our attention. You know, I, I, I'm glad you used the word. I love the word tension because as I drink this wine, you don't notice the acid, you notice the tension. And to me, there's a difference between acidity, high acidity and tension. Tension is balanced acidity, okay? And that's what I get here. Um, I, I'd love to talk for about another hour about this wine because it's, it's dynamite. Um, we have to move on to the next one, but final thoughts from you guys, just about where this thing's going. How soon will you bottle? When would... Um, What's your drinking window on this? Mm -hmm. I don't know when we're bottling this. <laughs> I think we're bottling this as soon as possible yeah, for the uh, five cases. Good. Uh, as part of our tenor program, it will be over vintage at, up to this point and then bottled by August, I believe. This August? Yeah. This August. Yeah. This August. Yeah. Yeah. August of 22. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay. Outstanding. Um, Congratulations. It's it's a thrill to have you on here. It's a thrill to have you in Woodenville. This is obviously my home and and it's great to have you guys here. We thank Matthews. We wish them the best of success with you guys. And folks, as you take a look at the auction lots, don't miss the single white wine that's that's up for auction at the uh, auction of Washington Wines private barrel auction. All the funds like the guys mentioned earlier go directly to the future of Washington winemaking by supporting WSU, the Wine Science Center, the research that's done there. And cheers, you guys. What a, what a treat to have you here. All the best. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank, Thank you, Bob. Bye-bye.